you were combining data with knowledge. Yeah. And that that yeah, requires a Bayesian approach. And in particular, causal knowledge. Yeah. To causal knowledge. Help explain sort of biases, um, missing data. So it's, it's all about uh, looking for explanations. It's, it's, it's not just sort of your classical number crunching, which is what most statisticians do. You know, we, we're looking for causal explanations, why the data is, is what it is. Yeah. So if I, uh, this is going to be a little bit challenging since most of uh, the dark horse followership is probably listening on audio. We're not going to do any visuals here yeah. and they would be uh, important if we were going to do an exhaustive explanation of um, the Bayesian approach. But just to take one reducto ad absurdum, if you had a test for smallpox that was... Uh, ninety nine percent accurate in the positive direction, and you gave it to a random person in Los Angeles today, and they came up positive. That would not say they had a ninety nine percent chance of having smallpox because smallpox, as far as we know, is not anywhere in circulation. The percentage of the population that has it is zero. Yeah, so you exactly. would have to be very skeptical of that positive, even though the test itself might be. Uh, um, chemically very effective at detecting smallpox. Yeah, in that case, it could be like 99.9% .9 accurate. I mean, the key thing is, this is where people get, in fact, even with during the COVID debate with the false positives on the PCR testing, it's a very relevant question. Of course, Bayes comes in here. It's all about, it's, it's, it's all very well having a, a small probability of a false positive. So you might, it might only be, you know, well under 1% chance that if you don't have the disease, you don't have the virus, a smallpox in your example, that you're wrongly test positive. So it's, you know, it's 99% of the time when you, when you don't have it, it gives you the right answer, right? So it seems like it's really accurate. But of course, if, if the incidence rate is, let's say, one in a thousand. Of course, with smallpox, it's even lower. But just let's suppose with COVID, it's one in a thousand, right? What that means is that in a thousand, if you take 10,000 people, right, only about 10 of them will have the disease. But of the other 990 or whatever, you're going to get this 1% false positive rate. So you're going to get 19, about 99 of those who don't have the disease testing positive. So you've got about 110 testing positive, of whom only about 10 genuinely have the disease. So the probability that you've got the disease having tested positive is actually less than 10%. Right. And that's and what people get wrong. And people, this has been such a problem explaining this throughout. So people are saying, we know they say they we we know that the, the false positive rate for PCR testing is, is less than one percent. It's it's only 0.3 percent, you know, you know, less than a third of a percent. So how can you turn around and say that a lot of people who are asymptomatic with test positive haven't got the disease? It's rubbish. But of course, no, we know that we know from empirical data, we've actually got data on asymptomatics and whether or not they the, the they're testing with false positives or not. And like over 80% of them who tested positive did not have the virus. They really were false positives. Wow. Well, I, I must tell you one of the things that Heather and I scratch our heads about all the time is that we are, what, two and a half years into this pandemic and the testing is still so crude and our understanding of what it implies is so poor. How can that possibly be? Well, I think that the, the testing was always part of the creating the narrative. I mean, look, I, I, how did I first get into trouble, as it were? How, did I, how was I first labelled a spreader of misinformation during this whole thing? It was actually when the mass testing started in the UK in the late summer of 2020, and that was mass testing of asymptomatic people for whom we knew that you know, a, a high proportion weren't going to be having the virus, but they were reports, they started to report, they were as had always just reported case numbers. So you look at the government dashboard and you see this increasing number of, of case numbers, right? And a case is just a positive, someone testing positive on a PCR test, right? So I'm looking and saying, hang on a sec, this is going right up, but actually it's the amount of testing that's going up. So let's just divide, let's perform the radical act of right. simple division. We'll divide the number of cases by the number of tests. And when you do that, you see, actually, there wasn't much of an increase. Flat, yeah. That, that radical act of simple division is what cast me as a spreader of misinformation. And from that point on, 
that was that was the you know that that was the end of my sort of academic credibility as far as you know as far as the the uh, accepted academia is concerned. Well, this is what this is one of the things that's so upsetting to me is that yes, that radical act of division, doing it per capita and discovering that your trend was an artifact an obvious artifact yeah. of the fact that you were doing more tests. And I mean, let's, let's take my reducto ad absurdum. Yeah. If we were to play that same game with smallpox today, and we yeah. were to start testing people for smallpox yeah. with a highly accurate test with a very low false positive rate, right? And we were to, let's say we set out to test the entire population. Yep. Well, you and I both know what that would look like. We would see the number of cases of smallpox exactly. detected. The more you test, the more it goes up. Right. And the fact is the actual number of cases would be zero throughout, but the number of apparent cases would be would be yep. accelerating. And we know what the news narrative would be. Yeah, now, absolutely. The problem is that as much as it is difficult to understand Bayesian priors and all of the things that go into a proper analysis, the error that you are describing is one any high school student of probability ought to understand perfectly well. So the idea that our public health apparatus got it wrong um, stretches the bounds of credulity. How, how could they have missed uh, a per capita analysis was necessary? We, we've done it long before this whole COVID thing. We, we also did, we were also involved in some of the you know, studies which looked at the why, you know, people get this kind of reasoning wrong. And well, it's not just us, it's been various studies in here. But I mean, I can give you, so there's lots of studies which show that, you know, very highly intelligent people, even people with, with you, know, quant, you know, quantitative knowledge, people who have kind of like scientific degrees don't get these, don't, don't get this simple point, okay? And, you know, I, I've also been involved in a lot of legal work and this whole thing amounts to what's called the prosecutor status in law, where they, they mix the probability of the evidence, the probability of the evidence given the hypothesis, they confuse the probability of the hypothesis given the evidence. So it's, it's basically the same thing as what we've been discussing here, which is the assumption that that, that one over 100, that the 99% accuracy is the 99% chance that you, you don't have the disease. So anyway, the point is they get it wrong. And I've, I've spoken, you know, I've spoken with the top, the most brilliant judges, for example, on this, and try to give, very, and we give, you know, what I think is a very simple, like visual explanation, just doing it with sort of, you know, stick men, you, you show that the sort of argument I gave before, but actually showing it so you can really see. And they say, and they'll say things like, doesn't matter how many times you, you say, I still, I still think is wrong. I still think that the, <laughs> right. yeah, I think I mean, you're wrong in, in your conclusion. I, Bayes, I, the rational Bayes answer is wrong according to them. <laughs> Right. It's really a question, you know, I, I don't know that the right Bayesian environment exists developmentally for us to develop the correct intuitions, but I think many of us have looked at the Monty Hall problem, for example, yeah. and thought, I get it, but wow, does that feel wrong every time exactly. I go through it, you know? Yeah. It just it just feels off. 